A wise man once said that no matter how bad things get on land, the one thing you should never ever do is get in the water. And for many, this is the ultimate truth, as the ocean is well known for harboring many terrifying creatures, the likes which have inspired stories, myths, and nightmares. And yet, the waters of today are nothing compared to the oceans and seas of prehistoric times, namely those of the late Cretaceous. Back then, the waters of Earth saw a myriad of ferocious predators, including dinosaur-eating sharks, fish that could swallow humans whole, giant crocs that prowled the seas, and of course, the mighty mosasaurs, which ruled during the entire Cretaceous period, becoming apex predators in nearly every corner of the planet. And of all the mosasaurs to come and go, the mightiest and largest of them all was the mosasaurus. This creature isn't just important as it was the largest of its kind, but also because it's the first one known to science, with the holotype being unearthed over 260 years ago in the Netherlands. The remains consisted of a giant skull, which at first was thought to have belonged to a whale. This misclassification though was quickly followed by another misinformed idea, suggesting that it wasn't a whale but rather a giant crocodile. Its discovery was a massive hit at the time, as back then it was believed that no animal could ever go extinct, which just added to the confusion regarding its classification. And this confusion lasted for over 40 years, until during the 1800s, when it was finally realized through new specimens that it wasn't a whale or a crocodile, but rather a giant marine lizard the likes of which had never been seen. It was also in the 1800s that the holotype was finally described and named with paleontologists dubbing it Mosasaurus Hoffmani, meaning Hoffman's Lizard of the Meuse River. However, despite being named and reclassified, at the time, the Mosasaurus was still poorly understood, with early depictions portraying it as a semi-aquatic animal that could walk on land and had claws. It would take an additional 30 years for this misinterpretation to clear up, as in 1854, it was pointed out that its phalange bones had no indication of muscle or tendon attachment, meaning that walking would have been impossible. More developments in the understanding of the Mosasaurus quickly followed, as throughout the rest of the 1800s and early 1900s, many new specimens were located, including individuals that were unique enough to be considered new Mosasaurus species. And as of today, there are five known species, which along with the Hoffmani, include the Missouriensis, Conodon, Lemonieri, and Bogue. Each one differed in size and were also unique to each other when it came to body, teeth, and skull structure. Additionally, these new mosasaurs were not the only notable discoveries, as other animals similar to it were found through the years as well, which, while were not similar enough to be considered new species of the mosasaurus, were no doubt close relatives, such as the contemporary Tylosaurus. These finds resulted in the creation of the clade Mosasauria, which is defined as all the descendants of the last common ancestor of Mosasaurus, Dolichosaurus, Coniosaurus, and Adriosaurus. Within this newly formed clade, the Mosasaurus is a part of the infamous Mosasauridae family, which in turn falls under the squamata order that includes snakes and lizards. However, even though nearly all paleontologists agree the Mosasaurus was a squamate, there is a fierce debate on who its closest living relative is, with some believing this to be monitor lizards, while others argue it's snakes. For now, this conversation continues, but there is no debate on whether or not the Mosasaurus is the largest squamate or Mosasaur to ever live, as it was a true sea monster. The Mosasaurus was so large that if it was still alive today, the only way to likely successfully capture it would be through highly specialized boats. However, through Fishing Clash, which is also today's sponsor, you can catch the Mosasaurus, along with other prehistoric animals like the Megalodon, Dunkleosteus, and Ichthyosaurs. So, if you ever wanted to be a fisherman in prehistoric eras, now you can, with the added benefit of being able to do it all from the safety of your own couch. Another cool part is that Fishing Clash lets you fish all over the world, where you can catch fish that are both realistic in graphics and in location so it can almost teach you where certain species of fish actually inhabit. You can also play against other people, if you have that competitive spirit. And for the lovers of the RPG vibe, you can also customize your experience by building your own fishing village to upgrade your equipment, which will also help you land the biggest catch. 
So if you want to support the channel and try your hand at catching some marine behemoths, use my link in the description box or scan the QR code you see on the screen. And use my special gift code, Extinct Zoo to get a special $20 value reward, including a unique avatar for free. Logistically, to get your gift, you'll have to go to the menu option in the top right of the screen in the game, and the options that pop up, choose gift codes, and enter my code to get your reward. Now back to the Mosasaurus's size. Across the five known species, the average adult is believed to have measured between 7 and 11 meters, or 23 and 36 feet, with Lemonieri and Hoffmani being the two larger species. At the higher range of this estimate, the Mosasaurus would have been twice the length of the typical great white shark, and roughly equal to a whale shark. On top of this, thanks to its more robust build, the Mosasaurus was fairly heavy, with a 36 foot or 11 meter individual weighing over 10 tons making it heavier than every carnivorous dinosaur to ever live, including the T-Rex. And the Mosasaurus didn't stop here, as specimens greatly varied in size, meaning that once in a blue moon, an absolute unit of an individual has been found, with the Hoffmani yielding most of these giants. One notable specimen is referred to as the Penza Mosasaurus. This individual's true length is uncertain due to a lack of remains, but based on its huge skull, some researchers believe that it measured 17.1 meters or 56 feet from snout to tail. It is widely considered by many to be the largest Mosasaurus discovered to date, although a lesser known specimen may actually have it beaten. This new contender is known from skull material, specifically a quadrant that is 150% larger than the average Mosasaurus quadrant, giving it a hypothetical length of 18 meters or 59 feet and a weight of almost 15 tons. This length would make this individual comparable to numerous whales, including exceptionally long sperm whales and humpback whales. And at this size, the Mosasaurus wasn't just the biggest carnivore of its own time, but the entire Cretaceous period. This resulted in it being an apex predator within its environment. Though it wasn't just the size that other animals had to worry about, as the Mosasaurus possessed a highly specialized and deadly weapon, its jaw. The jaw and skull of the Mosasaurus were relatively large for its body length, which allowed for a long row of giant teeth that could sometimes measure over 3 inches or 7.6 centimeters. These teeth were well designed for cutting prey with their two opposite cutting edges, which were also highly prismatic, a characteristic known to strengthen the durability of teeth, improve the slicing efficiency through fine serrations, and increase gripping power while clamping down on an unlucky creature. The Mosasaurus is also known to have had an extremely powerful bite in general, as indicated by the build of its skull, where both its frontal and parietal bones overlapped, creating a rigid cranial structure that was connected by strong interlocking sutures. This design allowed the Mosasaurus to resist extreme amounts of compression and force while biting down, suggesting it had a hellish bite force which some have estimated to be between 13,000 and 16,000 pounds per square inch, making it about four times stronger than the bite of a saltwater crocodile. This powerful chomp, coupled with the design of its teeth and size, allowed the Mosasaurus to kill virtually anything in its environment, and led to a very diverse diet which included bony fish, sharks, cephalopods, birds, turtles, and other marine reptiles. Direct evidence of its predation has even been found, as demonstrated by an allopleuron, a type of giant sea turtle which had deep bite marks across its body and shell that matched those of the Mosasaurus. The size and depth of these bite marks highlighted the vicious nature of Mosasaurus attacks, and is further supported by yet another discovery, but that this time came from the stomach of a Mosasaurus itself. The specimen in question is a 75 million year old individual that was found with a 1 meter or 3.3 foot long fish in its gut that had been completely dismembered during the hunt. On top of this, the carbon isotopic signature of these giant marine lizards suggests that not even the biggest animals around were off the menu, as its carbon isotope levels were extremely low, which can occur with a diet high in large sea turtles and other large marine reptiles. The power of the Mosasaurus was not the only trait it possessed that allowed it to be such a successful hunter, as it was also a surprisingly fast swimmer, 
thanks to its massive tail, which played the main role in its locomotion. Scientists speculate that the Mosasaurus swam by moving this giant tail side to side in a rapid fashion, akin to what is seen in certain fish such as the mackerel. This form of swimming is very efficient and could have granted the Mosasaurus a top speed of 30 miles per hour or 48 kilometers per hour. The flippers too played a vital role in its locomotion as they were used to maneuver its large body and were quite powerful for their size, thanks to the attachment of large muscles. The power of the flippers may have actually been so forceful that they resulted in an injury during high speed maneuvers, which is demonstrated by the fact that many specimens possess separation injuries on their flippers. It's thought that these incredible speeds were seen primarily during ambushes as most paleontologists believe this to be the Mosasaurus's main hunting tactic. And speed wasn't the only tool it used when deploying ambushes, as the Mosasaurus's eyes were relatively large for its body and had sclerotic rings that took up much of its eye socket, suggesting exceptional binocular vision that could be used to single out prey. Meanwhile, Scans of the brain case suggest that other senses such as its smell weren't that great, implying that it heavily relied on its vision, which also indicates that it was an active predator and not a scavenger, as without a good sense of smell, it couldn't pick up on the scents of nearby carcasses. It's clear that the Mosasaurus was outfitted with a lot of powerful tools and weapons that surely many unfortunate victims experienced. And it turns out that one animal who wasn't saved from its wrath was itself as throughout the years numerous Mosasaurus specimens have been found with extensive damage that is widely believed to have come from intraspecific combat. Some of these fights were particularly brutal, showcased by one specimen that was found with an entire tooth embedded in its lower jaw right underneath its eye. Despite how bad this sounds, this individual was actually one of the lucky few, as its skeleton showed signs of healing, meaning it survived the fight. Not all were this fortunate though, as demonstrated by another specimen that had multiple breaks, lacerations, and punctures on various bones, especially those in the back of the skull and neck. In this case, there was no healing scene, indicating that the individual was killed by its attacker. Paleontologists believe that these fights between mosasaurs may have looked similar to combat seen in modern crocodiles, who grapple their rival's head during attacks. Currently, the reason why these Mosasauruses fought each other is not certain, but because many known victims were sub-adults or smaller juveniles, scientists think that it may have been a result of cannibalism. Surprisingly, getting eaten by a fellow Mosasaurus wasn't the only concern with intraspecific competition, as many who survived such battles eventually became hindered or diseased due to their injuries. Most commonly, it seems that wounds sustained led to deep bacterial infections in the bones sepsis, necrosis, and unhealed fractures. Sometimes even their vital tails were impacted, as unnatural fusions could occur following a tail injury, making locomotion extremely challenging. However, despite these hardships, the Mosasaurus was still ultimately one of the most successful animals of the entire Cretaceous period, which is reflected by its widespread range that encompassed much of the globe. Remains show that it was common throughout the Atlantic Ocean and connecting seaways, most notably the Western Interior Seaway and the Mediterranean Tethys. Overall, bones have been found in Canada, Europe, United States, Turkey, Russia, the Levant, Argentina, Brazil, the Western African coastline, and Antarctica. This diverse range meant that the Mosasaurus was able to adapt to many climatic zones, including tropical, subtropical, temperate, and even subpolar ones. In all these environments, remains are usually concentrated in areas that align with what would have been coastline waters, where the average depth was about 50 meters or 160 feet. Although, occasional finds still show that it could and would venture to deeper waters when needed. The wide range of the Mosasaurus meant that it lived alongside a plethora of animals, which included the Prognathodon, Halosaurus, Plioplaticarpus, Platycarpus, Carinodons, Tylosaurs, Allopleurodon, Glyptocolone, Elasmosaurus, Squalicorax, Cretolamna, Ceratolamna, Sandsharks, Simolichthys, Enchidus, Protosphorina, various Bothromidaidae, Globidens, Goronisaurus, Eigdemonosaurus, Aremiosaurus, Pachyvarenus, 
Paleoiphus, Zarafasora, Stratidus, Terminonator, Delicorhynchops, Protostega, Archelon, Bapterhynchus, Ichthyornis, Halimornis, Pseudocorax, Scapanorhynchus, Odontospis, Ischyriza, Xyphactinus, Sarodon, Lyodon, and the Chi Kaifilu. The large number of coexisting mosasaurs has long been a source of interest to paleontologists, as many of them were like the Mosasaurus, apex predators, and some were even comparable in size, albeit not quite as big. The largest ones in particular include the Prognathodon, Tylosaurus, and the Antarctic Kai Kai Filu. It's believed that in order to mitigate competition, each had developed their own unique diets, which is reflected by the uniqueness of their teeth. Yet, combat between mosasaurs was still unavoidable at times due to their sheer abundance, and evidence of such battles are known to science, with one case involving an unfortunate smaller mosasaurus that was ambushed and rammed by a tylosaurus, resulting in a fractured skull and likely death. Such battles between giants would have been a grand sight, and were possibly quite common, as the Mosasaurus were at the height of their power during these times, and in fact were experiencing their highest level of evolutionary radiation of all time, when suddenly, 66 million years ago, it all came to an abrupt ending. Until this point, the Mosasaurus had been thriving for over 20 million years, with its oldest fossils being dated to 82 million years ago. Yet sadly, none of its deadly traits and features could prevent it from going extinct during the KT extinction event, which was caused by a giant asteroid. Studies on this event have found the Mosasaurus population was devastated in many ways, including food chain collapses and tsunamis, the latter of which is actually known to have been the source of damage in certain specimens. It's believed that for some time, Mosasaurus that were out at deep sea may have been able to survive the most immediate effects of the asteroid, but eventually they too succumbed, likely due to starvation, finally bringing an end to this mighty creature and the last known grand marine reptiles. But interesting enough, the KT extinction event wouldn't spell the end for all great reptiles, as there was one family of reptiles that survived and became the largest terrestrial carnivore the world has seen since the dinosaurs. And these were the Sebecidae, which we just made a video on. So go check that out if you want to hear about some massive T-Rex teethed reptiles. And don't forget to support the channel by downloading Fishing Clash and using my gift code ExtinctZoo so you can get that $20 value reward for free in Fishing Clash. Thanks for watching, and until next time on Extinct Zoo.